Welcome to your first lesson for the second quarter. Uh, we've got a nice, fresh, clean start to the quarter, and uh, let's make sure we get off to a good start and have a real strong, solid week here as we get going. Our title today is called Solving Fractional Equations, and uh, these are definitely big bears um, with regards to our regions exam at the end of the year. These questions would usually fall on part three or part four of that test, so that kind of tells you what we're getting ourselves into today. Um, in fact, I put an example down here at the bottom of the, the first page of notes, just so you can kind of get a glimpse of how uh, ugly they might look like tonight. So as far as our couple of good habits we want to get into as we get started, step one, I want you to always ask yourself when each fraction is undefined. If you recall, when we talked about fractions being undefined, that simply meant uh, you know the, the denominator equaling zero. We're not allowed to divide by zero. So if I looked at this example at the bottom of the page here, I would say to myself, x is not allowed to equal 8 for the simple reason. If you look at this denominator right here, if you did let x equal 8, you'd end up getting 8 minus 8, which is, yeah, 0. We could also say that x is not allowed to equal 2 for this simple reason right here. If we substituted a 2 for that x, we would end up getting a 0 again. So I'm always going to start off each problem by just making a simple note of what x is not allowed to be. For example, if I get done solving this equation and one of my solutions was x equals 8, I'd have to reject that because of the simple statement we made here in step 1. We'll definitely see one of those later on in our notes tonight. Uh, step number 2 is to get in the habit of identifying the common denominator. Now one thing you'll notice here, it's very important that each denominator is factored completely. Last week we saw several times we were trying to figure out the common denominator in our head without factoring all the denominators. And that's an extremely difficult task. So just go ahead, take the extra uh, time to factor these denominators. Um, I, you'll notice down here in this example, I've already factored that denominator completely. So um, I would simply say that my common denominator is the quantity x minus 8 and the quantity x minus 2. Once you identify your common denominator, what we're going to do is we're going to distribute that common denominator through the entire equation, both sides. Um, another way to write that is we could say that we're going to multiply each individual term by our common denominator over 1. Perhaps maybe that'll help. Uh, the, some students prefer to write it uh, that way. Uh, the, but the bottom line is we're going to treat each term the same. By multiplying by the common denominator, our goal is to kill all those fractions. That's my, that's my big, big picture goal today is to kill all those fractions as quickly as possible. Once you kill those fractions, your life's going to be significantly easier. Um, we're just going to solve the resulting equation that we have in front of us. It might be either linear or quadratic. Depends on the problem. And then the last thing we're going to emphasize today is the check. Um, it's, not going to, it's not as time consuming as it might sound. You're going to show your substitution. You're going to show me on your paper that you plugged your solution back into the original equation. And once you do that, we're going to fire it in the calculator and then confirm that the left side does equal the right side. So I think we're about ready. Usually these steps sound very confusing until we get a couple of examples under our belt. So let's see if we can apply these five steps to the next problem. Here's our first example. It's, it's a bit friendlier than the one we saw on the first slide, just by the mere sense that um, all of my denominators are monomials, and none of them can be factored any more than they already are. So it's, it's a fairly friendly uh, problem with regards to fractional equations. Uh, our first step said, ask yourself, when are the denominators equal to 0, or when, is the, when are the fractions undefined? Um, I'm going to make a note to myself that x is not allowed to equal 0 itself. Okay, simply uh, either looking at the first denominator here or the third denominator, if x was 0, then we'd have an undefined fraction. And all this means is if we get to the end of the problem and we do happen to get x equals 0 as one of our solutions, we'll have to reject it because of this statement right here. All right, step 2 says we're going to identify our common denominator. Um, if I consider all the denominators, I'm going to say that 12x is... Um, is the smallest expression that is divisible by 3x, 4, and the x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the original equation here, and I'm going to distribute my common denominator throughout the entire equation. So here's, and, and I'm going to encourage us to go nice and slow today. Here's what it's going to look like. If I distribute that 12x to the first term, and then we're going to distribute it to the second term, 
Notice we've got multiplication in between those fractions there. Equals, and, and here's my last term, but I'm, I'm even distributing that common denominator to him as well. And it doesn't matter what order you put those in. You notice I put 3 over x first, and then the 12x over 1 second. We could flip-flop these two fractions right there um, in, in either order, and it, we're going to get the same result. Okay, now how do we actually clean these up? Let's focus on this first fraction right here. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that x kills that x, and I'm going to say 3 goes into that 12 four times. Now we're going to take what's left in that numerator and multiply straight across, and 4 times 6 gives me 24. Moving on to my second fraction here, my second term. All I can say here is that 4 goes into 12 three times. I'm going to take now what's left. 3x times 5 gives me 15x. And then over here we could say that this x kills that x and 3 times 12 gives me 36. I'm telling you, once you get, if you're comfortable getting this far, you're going to be really successful tonight. It's um, now all we're staring at is a very simple, basic linear equation. We're going to subtract the 24 over, and that gives me a 12. I'm going to divide my 15 over. 12 divided by 15 will reduce that to 4 fifths. And here's what we're claiming: we're claiming that 4 fifths is our solution. The only thing left to do is to check this, um, and I'm going to use a lot of calculator. And I'm going to show you exactly what this should look like. So the first thing we have to do is, is, is it's called showing your substitution. We're taking our solution of 4 fifths and we're substituting it back into the original equation. Every time I saw an x, I replaced it with the 4 fifths right here and also over here. Now typing this into my calculator can be very messy. So look at a couple of the tricks I did. The first thing I did is I said, okay, my solution 4 fifths, I'm going to store it in alpha a. Okay, um, the store button is in the, your left-hand margin towards the bottom of your, sh um, of your calculator. Yeah, we've stored things uh, earlier in, back in September. If you're a little rusty and you forgot how to store, then we can talk about that in class tomorrow. Now, you'll notice here's the advantage. Once I've stored that uh, in alpha A, it's much easier to type in. So I, right here, I typed in the entire left side of my calculator screen. I was very careful to use the parentheses around the quantity 3a. Um, those parentheses are extremely important. Without them, we're going to get the wrong answer. When I hit enter, I had 3.75. Now I went over here and I typed in the right side of the equation, hit enter. Because these two numbers right there match, we do have a successful check. 4 fifths is indeed our correct solution. And just to reiterate, this is I'm typing in the entire left side of the equation first, and then I'm typing in the entire right side of the equation secondly. And we could then make a definitive statement that 4 fifths is indeed our solution. Notice I'm not saying that 3.75 is my solution. I'm saying 4 fifths is my solution. And that is our final answer to number 1. Our second example looks a little uh, little hairier here. We've got some binomials in the denominator, and you'll notice that um, one of them can be factored. Uh, this last denominator has to be, let's rewrite it as a plus 1 times the quantity a minus 1 because of the difference of two perfect squares. Again, I want to reiterate in general here, if I get to going too fast through this problem, please hit the pause button, rewind it, take as much time as you need so that we understand this um, you know, the best we can the first time. It's going to be very important that we do the best we can the first time through here. Now, once I get that factored completely, I'm going to simply ask myself, when are these fractions undefined, or when are the denominators equal to zero? Uh, I'm going to make a statement that a is not allowed to equal negative 1 because of that first fraction right here. And I'm also going to make a statement that a is not allowed to equal positive 1 because of that second denominator. And then the, the third denominators were just repeats of the first couple, so we're all good to go. And these are very important. This is going to play a very big role in this problem here. My second step is to identify my common denominator. And I believe that my common denominator is going to be the, the quantity a plus 1 and the quantity a minus 1. So I'm going to distribute that common denominator. And it's going to be a little tricky to fit this in here. But my common denominator is a plus 1 times the quantity a minus 1. And what I'm going to do is I've got to distribute that to all three terms, both on the left side and the right side. Now, as we take our time to do that, here's what it's going to look like. a plus 1 times a minus 1 
times my first term. And then we're going to continue to distribute. Here's my common denominator times my second term. Running out of room very quickly here. We'll see if we can squeeze it in. And then here's my common denominator times the last term over here. Oops, got a little messy right there. Okay, so we barely fit that in there. Uh, we've just distributed the uh, common denominator to each of the uh, terms. It's very, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's going to pay off. I think it's going to make, um, it's going to give us a better chance of getting the right answer on a consistent basis. Now, as far as we focus on cleaning up this first term, we could say that the A plus 1s cancel out, and then I multiply what's left in my numerator, and I get A minus 1. Notice I no longer have a fraction. My goal was to kill the fractions. On my second term here, we could say that the quantity A minus 1s, they cancel each other out. We'll multiply what's left in the numerator, and I've got a plus 1. And then over here, we, we like, uh, let's see, the a plus 1's cancel, the a minus 1's cancel, and if I multiply what's left, I strictly have a, only a 1. Again, we got to this point, it, it, the problem's a lot friendlier now. We're staring at a linear equation. I'm going to combine my like terms. a plus a gives me 2a. Uh, the negative 1 plus the 1 cancels out. Whoops, i got to call a timeout. I was just looking at my notes, and I realized that I made a mistake back at the beginning. Um, but the good news is we don't have to erase everything. Just go back to the beginning. Make this numerator a 2 up here, that last numerator. So then I'm just going to come down. I'm going to make this a 2. Very sorry about this. I screwed this up. Um, and, and then what happens is this is a 2 here. This is a 2 here. Okay. Now what we have left uh, is solving for a. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I'm going to get a equals 1. So right now it feels like a equals 1 is my solution. But you'll notice, remember our very first thing we wrote up here in the upper right-hand corner here in this little cloud? We made a comment that a was not allowed to equal 1 because if a was equal to 1, then my denominator would turn out to be 0 and my fractions would be undefined. So what I'm going to do is I end up rejecting this right away because of that, and I'm going to say that we have no solution, or mathematically we say an empty set. We just use our solution set notation. We put nothing in there, and that's our way of saying empty set, no solution. And we don't even have anything to plug back in because we rejected that one so early. Okay, now we're moving on to our third problem. Uh, there's a couple of bear traps lurking in this problem, and we'll address them uh, as we approach them. My first comment, I want to consider my denominators and, and ask myself, when will these fractions be undefined? Or, uh, in other words, when would my denominator be equal to zero? The first, if I look at this uh, denominator right here, I'm going to say that a is not allowed to equal zero. And if I look at this denominator, I'm going to say that a is not allowed to equal negative one. And just to, real quick, so if we do get 0 or negative 1 as a solution at the end of this problem, we're going to have to reject them because of those statements. Okay, my next step is to identify my common denominator. I'm going to say that my common denominator is both the 2a and the quantity a plus 1. When in doubt, if you're ever having trouble and you're debating about what your common denominator should be, you could always just multiply all the denominators together, and that'll be suffice as a common denominator. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up this fractional equation that we have here. And I'm going to show that I'm distributing my common denominator all the way through this problem. And we're going to be very meticulous here. We're going to take our time. We're going to rewrite it. Um, so let's see. I'm going to distribute to the first term. Now that first term is very interesting. It was written as just a 2. I'm going to rewrite this 2 here as 2 over 1. That's going to help us line things up. Then we have a minus sign. That minus sign is one of the lurking bear traps, and, and how we handle that minus sign is going to be extremely important. So there's my common denominator, and I'm multiplying it by the second term here. And then last but not least, we're going to multiply our, we're distributing our common denominator all the way to that last term. So right there, I think that's the most time-consuming step, but I think it's the most beneficial step. It's going to make sure that we were very successful here. 
Okay, our first, the first of what I consider two mega bear traps is right here. How do we handle this first term? What's challenging here is that nothing cancels out. Our denominators are both ones. There's nothing to cancel. How do we handle this? What I want you to do first is to take the 2a and distribute that through the quantity a plus 1. Hopefully you got 2a squared plus 2a. After you distribute the 2a, now I want you to grab this 2 right here and distribute that through the 2a squared plus 2a. So we now have 4a squared plus 4a. So that was, that was a little confusing. Feel free to rewind it and replay that step. But basically, it's, a, it's what I call a double distribution. We're distributing the 2a first, and then we're distributing the 2 through that binomial. So we ended up with 4a squared plus 4a. Okay, moving on to my second term here. The good news is, is we do have something to cancel. We can say that the 2a here kills the 2a here. Um, so I, I have, I'm going to distribute the 5, no doubt. But this, the second bear trap I want you to focus on is not only am I distributing the 5, but I also have a minus sign out here that I want to distribute as well. So I'm going to end up with minus 5a minus 5. So again, there was two things to distribute, not only the 5, but also the minus sign. Equals. Over here, we have good news, the a plus 1s, those quantities cancel each other out. All I have left is a 2a times a 2a, which gives me 4a squared. Whew, time to take a deep breath. If you just survived that stage of the problem, we're in good shape. Now I'm going to just focus on combining like terms, cleaning things up. You'll notice if I, um, if I try to move all my terms over to the left side, if I take this 4a squared and I subtract it to the other side, it's going to end up canceling with the, the 4a squared that's over here already. So I can cross those off. If I combine my a's here in the middle, I'll end up with negative a. Now remember, we still have a 0 over here because we subtracted that 4a squared over, which left us with 0. The next thing I'm going to do is I could, uh, we could add the 5 over, and then we could divide both sides by negative 1. And here's what I've got. I've got a equals negative 5. It does not violate either of uh, the statements we made at the beginning. We said a couldn't be 0. We said a was not allowed to be negative 1. a certainly is allowed to be negative 5. The only thing left to do now is to check it. What I'm going to do on the next slide is I'm going to substitute the negative 5 back in for all the a's in the original equation, and we're going to simplify it and see if it does check. Okay, here's what the original equation looked like when I substituted my negative 5 in for each of the a's. There's three of them total. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take everything that was on the left side of this equation right here. I'm going to type it all into my calculator just the way I see it. I'm going to use, um, be very careful, we're going to, Make sure you have parentheses right around that uh, the 2 times negative 5. If we plug that in correctly, I got 5 halves. Perhaps your calculator said 2.5 after you hit enter. And then we're going to come over here again. I'm going to use parentheses around my denominator, just as an extra insurance policy. If we type that side in correctly, uh, I think I also got 5 halves. Uh, because they're the same, we're going to say this checks, and my solution is certainly negative 5. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's our first lesson for our second quarter. There's a lot to think about. Um, the, the big thing I want to emphasize is as soon as you see those equal signs in the equation, that implies that we're going to try to kill those fractions. We're using our common denominator, and we're going to distribute it through and wipe out all those fractions. So good luck tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you soon.